So how do you improve your ear training? What should you be focusing on? Well, that's the focus of this video. Hi, I'm Donna Schwartz from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site for practical tips and solutions to improve your music performance skills. There was a question in one of the saxophone forums in Facebook from Humberto, who also subscribes to my Facebook page. And here was his question. So I started kind of messing around with improvisation. I do know a little theory. Is there any reading material or anything you guys can send me in the right direction? I'm starting to think learning intervals instead of notes is more important. The only reason why I say this is because sometimes as I'm improvising, I know the scales and chords, but I don't know what kind of feeling in the solo, if that makes any sense. And then he explains that. He says, I guess what I meant to say is how to learn what kind of sound or properties do some intervals have? Well, I'm interpreting this to mean, okay, should I study intervals or should I study the sound of pitches and stuff like that? Which is a really good question. And my answer is yes to both, all right? You should definitely, when you're doing ear training, you want to develop a sense of relative pitch. So, you know, whatever your instrument is, you want to be able to know basically what a C may sound like. But you also need to get familiarity with what and how the intervals sound. That's going to help you determine when you're listening and using your ears, whether you're hearing a major chord or a minor chord or diminished or a major seventh chord or two, five, one or whatever. It'll also help you determine if you're playing a blues because you'll be able to hear the progression um, and other types of chord progressions like uh, rhythm changes and such. So my answer is yes to both, but how do we develop that? Well, there's plenty of apps out there, um, way too many for me to list and more than I could possibly even know about to even tell you. So you can certainly explore those. It's a great idea. But to be honest with you, the two best ways to develop your ear training is by listening and by transcribing. Now, a little story, one of my mentors had, um, had made me, uh, when I first started studying with him, had made me transcribe a few solos. And these were solos that, you know, I, I was classically trained, okay? So I didn't even know about these solos and they were actually really cool. But he had me transcribing some of the simpler solos, even though I had a, a heavy music background. When you're trained classically, um, you do get ear training, but the one, how do I want to put this? The one thing that they really don't stress is transcribing at all, which is not a good thing. Um, so you're doing your ear training to learn how to play all these classical solos, but you're not doing any kind of transcribing. So anyway, he had me transcribing some simple solos and simple rock solos, um, and then they got progressively harder and harder. But the thing is that from doing that, from doing that exercise, I can't tell you how much that improved my ear training. And actually another story too, when I was very young, I played trumpet. I still do, I play trumpet and saxophones. And at the time, TV shows had great music themes to them. I'm thinking about Dynasty, I'm thinking about St. Elsewhere, I'm thinking about Dallas. Those are the ones that come to mind. They actually had themes, right? Um, and I love Dynasty because it's a great trumpet solo, okay? I forget who played that solo, but wow, just amazing. And so when I was in, I guess, sixth grade going to seventh grade, um, there were no CDs or anything like that. You had cassette tapes. So what I would do is when the TV show came on, I'd put my cassette recorder up to the TV and I'd record the, the, uh, the, the TV show theme. And I would figure it out. I'd figure it out by ear. And then I would write it down. And uh, I told one of my friends this story at the time. And she said, all right, well, you know what? The theme from uh, Dallas is really good. Why don't you write that out and why don't you make an arrangement out of it? So I did. And actually I got to the point where I was starting to figure out these TV, sh those TV show themes really quickly where I was able to just pop them out in like less than an hour with the melody, with some, with some of the chords and, and the, uh, the bass line, the harmonies and stuff. That did tremendous help for my ear training, for my sense of rhythms, because remember, we feel rhythms, we don't read them. And for, um, well, understanding relationships of notes to each other, chords, hearing bass lines, all that kind of stuff. 
So if you really want to improve your ear training, it's listening and it's also transcribing. Now with the listening, what I would say is, yeah, you want to listen to a lot of the songs that are in the genre that you like. And remember, it's not always just jazz. It could be world music. It could be classical music. Um, it could be rock, pop, okay, any of that kind of stuff. Do a lot of listening there, but you know what? Listen to other genres. Transcribe some of that stuff, okay? I think that would, that would really benefit you. But if you want to take it a step further, let's say you like jazz. Well, don't just try to transcribe this, the hardest stuff in creation. Go for some of the earlier uh, eras where the solos are a little bit simpler, okay? Uh, not so complex with substitutions and all that kind of thing. Transcribe some of those solos. Try to go historically. Try to listen to some Lester Young or uh, Ben Webster or certainly Louis Armstrong. You know, listen to some of the older, older stuff and really, really internalize it, okay? And, and go through each of the periods. Go through all, the, all of Miles Davis's periods, you know, throughout jazz, just to get a flavor of how jan jazz has progressed over time. Mary Lou Williams, okay? She's another one that has been through almost every period of jazz as well. Phenomenal jazz pianist and composer. Um, so that, to me, is the best answer I can give Humberto for his question you know, uh, with regard to how to improve your ear training. But he also asked for written materials. And what I'm going to recommend is, or are, the Jamie Abersold series of books. Now, if you get volume one, there's a lot of verbiage, a lot of writing in the beginning of that. I know, I know that we all don't read that. We skip over that, it's too much. Uh, some of it's a bit heavy, okay, it is, but he knows his stuff. But we tend to just play along with the tracks. And then we wonder why we're not doing so well, all right? So I would say take a moment, start to read some of that stuff, read a little bit each day, and try to incorporate it. Now, the other tip I'm gonna to say to you is if you ever order anything from Jamie Abersolf's site, jazzbooks.com, um, I would suggest that you check off the box at the end where you can get the free handbook, okay? It's it's packed, I mean, there's, what, probably 70, no, there's like 40 or 50 pages in here of solid, solid information. Again, you read a little bit at a time and try to work it in, try to assimilate it. But to really answer Humberto's question with ear training, on pages 21 and 22, Jamie talks about that. And more importantly, on page 22, there's an interval chart. And Jamie says, I'd like to use the following table as a guide to identify correctly whatever interval is being played. So he lists the interview, intervals, both going up, ascending, and going down, descending. So for example, um, the tune Maria from West Side Story uses an augmented fourth, a sharp four. Do, 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 right? So that will help you to identify that interval. You know, when we're in uh, music school and college, we have to go through a whole bunch of ear training courses, uh, piano courses, drop the needle tests. Boy, those are fun. <laughs> These types of little tips and tricks for remembering intervals do kind of help with regard to uh, those particular tests, but also being on the bandstand at jam sessions where you may not know the tune that's being called, or uh, you may not be familiar, you know, you may be in a blues jam and they're not telling you the key, so you gotta kinda figure out what's going on there. So I would definitely recommend that you pick up a copy of Jamie Abersold's Jazz Handbook, okay, um, from his website, jazzbooks.com. I think for written material, you know, if that's what you're looking for, for ear training, definitely look at this stuff. But honestly, when you're ear training, it's not written material. Okay, it's the apps. Um, even Jamie Abersold has a uh, program you could buy. It's a bunch of CDs where he goes through intervals with you. There's some great jazz sites that have their own online courses for ear training. Okay, uh, definitely look into those. In my Jazz Improvisation Explained course, we go through ear training each week for each module in that course. And it's call and response, but it's also listening to intervals and, and all those types of things as well. You can never get enough ear training. And I can say from my own personal experience, if you don't keep up with it, if you forget about it for a while, um, you lose quite a bit. So, you know, it's super important to make ear training um, a good part of your practice each week. So this way you keep up with that. It's only
going to benefit you. So hopefully this answered Humberto's question and your questions with regard to ear training. Don't forget, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out my website, donnaschwartzmusic.com. Right now, you can get a free video. Avoid the three mistakes most musicians make when improvising. Thanks again for joining me. Take care. Have a great day.